heads up assets. If you have watched Avengers Endgame, Thanos said, I am inevitable. Just like Thanos, change is also inevitable. That's why something must be done. Something must be adjusted to cope with the current changes. Do you want to know what I'm talking about? Step 5 will arrive shortly. Today we are in the third part of our lesson. We are going to discuss the fifth step of the accounting cycle, adjusting journal entries. Actually, this is the sixth step, but for the purpose of a more organized recording of accounts, we move this step one step ahead. Before we officially go to adjusting entries, let's review the revenue and expense recognition principle. Adjustment process relies on the revenue recognition and expense recognition principles. These are the important reminders in adjusting journal entries. First, revenue should be recognized when earned. Paano ba nagkakaroon ng kita? Una, kailangan mong i-recognize ang revenue kung nagbayad on a cash basis ang customer. Pangalawa, Kailangan mong i-recognize ang revenue kapag na-deliver mo ng products na binili ni customer or na-perform mo na ang service kahit hindi pa nababayaran. Next, expense should be recognized when incurred. When we say incurred, sa Tagalog ay natamo or nakuha. May iba't ibang uri ng expenses like salaries expense, supplies expense, rent expense, insurance expense, depreciation expense, interest expense, and utilities expense. Tulad ng revenue, binayaran mo man on a cash basis or nagamit at nakonsume mo na like supplies, rent, insurance, and utilities, expense should be recognized and recorded. Now, why do we need to adjust these accounts? Una, kasi may mga nangyaring transactions na hindi pa na record so, kailangang may isama. Pangalawa, kailangan ding masiguro na nasusunod natin ang revenue and expense recognition principle para maitama natin ang lahat ng information sa financial statements. Kung kulang o labis sa mga balances na nasa financial statements, dahil hindi na i-adjust, it can also affect the decision to be made by the management or the owners. Now that you have already knew the importance of adjusting entries, Let's talk about deferrals and accruals. Deferral is the postponement of the recognition of an expense already paid but not yet incurred or of revenue already collected but not yet earned. Ibig sabihin, may mga pagkakataon ng isang transaction na hindi mo pwedeng i-record as expense dahil hindi mo pa nagagamit as it is not yet incurred. Tulad ng prepaid expenses such as prepaid rent and prepaid insurance. They are considered assets and not expenses. May mga pagkakataon din ang revenue ay hindi mo pwedeng i-record as revenue or income hanggat hindi mo pa na perform ang service o hindi mo pa na ibibigay sa customer ang products kahit pa may natanggap ka ng bayad. That is the unearned revenue. It is recorded as a liability and not a revenue. May record mo lang siya as revenue kapag na-perform mo na ang service o na-deliver mo na ang products kay customer. How about accruals? Accrual is the recognition of an expense already incurred but unpaid or revenue earned but uncollected. Ibig sabihin, may mga transactions naman na kailangan mo nang i-record as expense kahit hindi mo pa nababayaran like utilities expense, expense sa tubig at kuryente. When it comes to revenue, may mga transactions na kailangan mong i-record as revenue 
kahit hindi ka pa nababayaran ni customer after you delivered the product or you rendered the service. Now, let's analyze how the ferals are adjusted. First, we have the prepaid expense. These are expenses customarily paid in advance. In example, supplies, rent, and insurance. Binayaran mo na kahit hindi ka pa required na magbayad for that period. But always remember that prepaid expenses are assets, not expenses. Habang lumilipas ang panahon, maaaring part ng prepaid expense ay nagamit or nakonsume mo na. Ang part ng prepaid expense na nagamit mo na ang marerecognize as expense. What are these prepaid expenses? The first one is a prepaid rent. Here is an example of a transaction related to prepaid rent. On December 1, Anytime Catering Services paid 16,000 pesos for two months rent advance. This expenditure resulted to an asset consisting of the right to occupy the office for two months. By December 31, one half of the asset had expired and should be treated as an expense. Your journal entry for December 1 would be debit prepaid rent 16,000 and credit cash 16,000. Since based on the problem by December 31, one half of the asset had expired, the adjusting entry would be debit rent expense 8,000 and credit prepaid rent 8000 the rent expense increases while prepaid rent decreases next is prepaid insurance on december 1 anytime catering services acquired a one year comprehensive insurance coverage on the service vehicle and paid 28800 pesos premiums in a manner similar to prepaid rent Prepaid insurance offers protection that expires daily. Your first journal entry would be debit prepaid insurance 28,800 and credit cash 28,800. But from December 1 to December 31 is one month. The insurance expense would be 2,400. That is 28,800 divided by 12 months. So the adjusting entries would be debit insurance expense 2400 and credit prepaid insurance 2400 next how about supplies on december 8 anytime catering services purchased supplies 36000 pesos so here your first journal entry would be debit supplies 36,000 pesos and credit cash 36,000 pesos. During the month, the entity used supplies in the process of performing services for clients. There is no need to account for these supplies every day since the financial statements will not be prepared until the end of the month. At the end of the accounting period, Enrico makes a careful physical inventory of the supplies. The inventory count showed that supplies costing 30,000 pesos are still on hand. Ibig sabihin, sa 36,000 pesos worth of supplies na binili niya noong December 8, ang natitira na lang as of December 31 is 30,000 pesos of supplies. So, magkano ang nagamit yung supplies? The answer is 6,000 pesos. That is 36,000 minus 30,000. The adjusting journal entry would be debit supplies expense 6,000 and credit supplies 6,000. Next is depreciation expense. Properties and equipment is subject to depreciation. Ang lahat ng buildings, vehicles, machines, computer, and other properties and equipment ay naluluma o nasisira kaya as time passes by, Bumababa ang value ng mga ito. That is depreciation. There are three factors in computing for depreciation expense. First one is the asset cost or kung magkano nabili ang property or equipment. Number two, estimated salvage value o kung magkano ang magiging halaga ng property o equipment 
once na na-reach na niya ang end of its useful life. Lastly, a useful life. Kaano katagal, tatagal ang isang asset. The salvage value and useful life is determined by the business. Ang salvage value ay pwedeng meron, pwede rin namang wala. Kung walang salvage value, ibig sabihin, wala na siyang halaga kapag ibinenta. Compute for the depreciation expense, the formula is asset cost minus estimated salvage value divided by the useful life. Let's analyze this example. Suppose that anytime catering services estimated that the service vehicle, 840,000 pesos, which was bought on December 4, will last for 7 years or 84 months, and with a salvage value of 168,000 pesos. Substitution of the pertinent amounts into the basic formula will yield depreciation for service vehicle for the month. This amount represents the cost allocated to the month, thus reducing the asset accounts and increasing the expense account. Applying the formula, the asset costs, which is 840,000 pesos, minus the salvage value of 168,000 pesos is 672,000 divided by the useful life of 84 months since 7 years is equivalent to 84 months. The depreciation expense of service vehicle is 8,000 pesos for the month of December. So the adjusted journal entry would be debit depreciation expense of service vehicle 8,000 and credit Accumulated depreciation of service vehicle, 8,000 pesos. Palagi magka-partner ang depreciation expense at accumulated depreciation. The second example for depreciation is this. The office equipment that was acquired on December 5 will have a useful life of 5 years or 60 months and will be worthless at that time. That is 120,000 divided by 60 months, that is 2,000. In this case, there is no salvage value, so it is simply computed as 120,000 divided by 60 months. Its depreciation expense for the month of December is 2,000. So the adjusted journal entries would be debit depreciation expense of office equipment, 2,000 pesos and credit accumulated depreciation of office equipment, 2,000. Last example for deferrals. Transaction pertaining to unearned revenue. On December 15, Anytime Catering Services received 20,000 pesos as an advance payment for referrals made. Your first journal entry for December 15 would be debit cash, 20,000 pesos, and credit and earned referral revenue, 20,000 pesos. It is your liability since no services are performed yet. Assume that by the end of the month, one of the three clients referred has already celebrated occasions, and as a result, the amount of 8,000 pesos pertaining to the referred event has been realized. Ibig sabihin na perform mo na ang service. So the adjusted journal entry would be debit and earned referral revenue 8,000 and credit referral revenue 8,000. The liability decreases and the revenue increases because revenue has been recognized when the service is already performed. Thank you so much for listening. For the continuation of this lesson, just click the link in the description box below. Once again, this is Sir Jamre Mangiat. In a life full of liabilities, always remember to become an asset. If you don't want to be an asset, don't try to be everyone's liability. Have a nice day, assets!